All right. So, oops, sorry. In the last uh, model, we were thinking mostly just about kinetics, and we didn't bring it into equilibrium too much. Um, now we're going to kind of bring in a bunch of equilibrium ideas. So here what I have is a few different uh, reactions of Y and Z um, reacting in a reversible state. So Y can go to Z and Z can go to Y. Um, and I have a few different conditions here. So for example, uh, in reaction A, I did three different trials where I started with different concentrations. Uh, and then we looked at the KY, the KZ, which are going to be constant for all of them. And then the difference between our final concentrations uh, for Y and Z. So looking here, question 57, what is the distinction between Y not and Y in the kind of tables? So anything that's going to be not, so a concentration not is always going to refer to a starting or a um, initial concentration. And uh, just a normal is going to be our, our final uh, concentration, our final amount. Um, now, the key thing is that uh, I've, I've said this a few times, and I'm going to continue to say this again and again and again. This does not mean that the reaction goes to the point where, like, for example, we think of reaction A trial 1, um, like up here. This does not mean that um, you have 100... Uh, let's just say molecules of Y, it's going to react until we get to 67 and the reaction just stops. That reaction is going to keep going, but every time that there's a conversion between Y and Z, you get the opposite to also occur because those rates are going to be um, the same. So that's our definition for equilibrium, which we're going to get back to a lot, um, including right now. So now let's specifically look at trial A2. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to use equations that we derove, uh, derived uh, in question 51, 52 up above to actually think about this. So just to kind of give you a reminder, those two equations we did, where's the rate of the forward and the rate of the reverse? So we said that the rate of the forward equals KY times Y, and we said it's first order. And then we said rate of the reverse equals KZ times z. So these were the two expressions that we drove um, in that last uh, set of videos. Actually, I think, yeah, I think it was just exactly one video ago. Um, I lose track of time easily. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to think about this reaction um, 2, where we have 50, 50, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 67, and 33. And what we're going to do is we're now actually going to plug in those values to these expressions to actually find a rate. So we see that our KY is 0 0.2 and our KZ is 0 0.4. So I'm going to plug those in first. 0 0.2 times something and then 0 0.4 times something. And then when we look at our final, so this value right here is not going to be our initial. It's going to be our final concentration. So I see that our final concentration is going to be 67 and 33. Uh, so 67 and 33. And then if we do that math, we see that this comes out to, I think it was like 13.4 and like 13.2. So here I see that my rate of my forward is approximately equal to my rate of my reverse reaction. So even though these values look different, right? I see that here I have 67, uh, molecules of Y and only 33 of Z. But when we take into account the full rate law and we plug in those concentrations with our KY and our KZ, we see that our rate of the forward and the rate of reverse are going to be very similar. Now let's do that one more time with D2. So that's going to be this uh, lower value right here. Um, so again, I'm going to write the exact same type of equations here. This would be just a carbon copy of this, this first line where we say our rate of our forward equals KY times Y and our rate of reverse equals KZ times Z. And now what we're going to do is we're going to find values from this table for trial D2. 
So for D2, KY is 0 0.2 and KZ is 0 0.6. So they flipped from that last time. Uh, uh, so let's see, 0 0.2 and 0 0.6. So that's now increased from 0 0.4. And then our final concentrations are going to be 75 and 25. So 75 and 25. And then if we go through and we calculate, so 75 times 0 0.2 gives us 15, and 25 times 0 0.6 also equals 15. So that tells me, my again, my rate of my forward is equal to my rate of my reverse reaction. And again, that's going to show that I'm in equilibrium. So <clears throat> in general, how does the rate of the forward reaction, so y going to z at equilibrium, compare to the rate of the reverse reaction, um, which is like z going to y at equilibrium? And if you recall, this right here is the definition of, that right there is simply the definition of equilibrium. And this is something we talked about back on page 43. Um, and at equilibrium, and this is another sign for equilibrium, just the arrows going in the opposite direction. Um, so that, that is the same as equilibrium. I like just drawing the double arrows because arrows, writing equilibrium is way too uh, hard. It's just too long. The rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse. And that's what we're seeing right here. So we're told that this is at equilibrium, but if we look at this, we see there's a bunch of different numbers and you're like, oh, those all can't be at equilibrium because they're not the exact same number. Like you might initially say like, oh, C should be in equilibrium because it's 50, 50 and you have the same rate constants and everything. That's fine. That's an easy one to know it's at equilibrium. But these here and like A's and B's and D's, those numbers look different. So instinctively you might not think that they're at equilibrium, but they are. Um, because the rates are equal, and that's the key thing about equilibrium. Equilibrium is when the rates of the forward and, react and reverse reactions are equal, not when the amounts are. So, um, thinking of then uh, 61, I'm going to read the question and I'm going to stay on this table and we'll go answer it in a second. So, if KY is less than KZ, um, which is greater at equilibrium? So which of these has KY being less than KZ? I see that occurs right here. And then um, I also see that that occurs right here. Um, so in the A and D situation, when KZ is greater than KY, what happens with regards to like Y and Z? And here we see that Y is larger in Z and Y is larger than Z. So down here, if KY is less than KZ, uh, these are referring to reactions A and D from the, that table above. We see that our concentration of Y is greater than our concentration of Z. And in the scenario where KY is greater, so KY is greater, we see, I'll switch colors uh, here. Um, we see that Z is gonna be greater than y. So this corresponds to reaction B, and we see that z is greater than y. Now the question is, you might ask is, why are we pointing that out? Um, we're going to get to that in the next couple questions. So if we now look at 63, so let's consider an energy diagram that we drew in like 54 and 56, where we were drawing, um, like we're talking about exothermic and endothermic, and we're thinking about what occurs when you have these exact scenarios where KY is greater or KZ is greater. And now if we consider those energy diagrams, we're gonna see if our answers here are gonna be consistent. So let's think back to, um, so let's see, so when KY is less than KZ. So let's see the one where KY is less than KZ. So KY is less than KZ is this one right here at 56. So when we see that KY is less than KZ, 
we're going to be this type of situation. And now let's look at the relationship between y and z. So we're thinking of like y and z. Um, we can see that we have different amounts, but those are showing energy. And that's going to be the, the important thing. So if we come back down here to this question, we see that they said that the amount when ky is less, um, the amount of y is greater. And when we come back up to here, instinctively, you might say like, oh, I see kz is higher in this plot. But kz here is, uh, I'm sorry, this, this plot here, this y-axis is showing energy. So whatever has the lowest amount of energy is going to be what's going to be formed more. So y is going to be formed more because it's lower energy. It's easier to make. Same thing, like, so if you have a bunch of z, z can easily overcome that activation energy and go to y. But y is not going to be able to reform that z. So a bunch of stuff this is going to collect on y. So we'll have a lot more y than z. Um, and then we can also do the exact same reasoning like right up here. Um, so overall, just kind of just writing everything down here. Um, and I'll write the, the opposite uh, one here just so you can go back and look. Um, so in Q62, we say that KY is greater than KZ. And that is the same as Q54. And in that case, Z has a lower energy. And remember, that's energy, not amount. Then Y. And then that says that in that case, Z is going to be greater than Y. Uh, and that is going to match uh, Q62. So similarly, if we come back up here, as I was talking here, we're going to see that in this case, Z is going to be the one that's at greater amount because it's at the lower energy. So a lot of things will collect down there at the lowest amount of energy. So that's going to be consistent. So initially that might be, you know, a little bit confusing, right? But if you think of the fact that, oh, if KY is greater, um, that means more Z is formed. But I think that makes sense because remember, this is thinking these, these Ks are our reaction, uh, our, our rate constants. So they're describing how fast that reaction is occurring. So if KY is greater than KZ, that means the forward reaction, so Y going to Z is occurring at a higher rate. So if y going to z happens at a higher rate, we're going to get more z. And that's exactly what we kind of see here. Um, so the, the idea is just going to be try, tying a lot of these together. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of math. And we're actually going to come up with a, a derivation for a very important term for equilibrium. So now what I want to do is we're going to take our kind of expressions we just wrote. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to develop a mathematical expression for y and uh, z. So let's go ahead and solve each of these initial ones. So we know that my rate of my Ford reaction equals ky times concentration of y. And now let's rearrange this to solve for y because we're going to find an expression for z divided by y. So we have to isolate y. So if I isolate just y, I'm going to divide ky to the other side. So that's going to be rate forward divided by ky. And I can do the exact same thing for like z. So rate of my reverse equals kz concentration of z. And if I solve that for z, that is going to be equal to my rate of my reverse over kz. So what I did is I just took our two general rate laws and I just rearranged them to solve for y and z. And now that I've done this, I'm now going to divide y and z. So if I do z divided by y, now I'm going to plug in those two terms that we had. So we had rate of my reverse over kz, rate of my forward over ky. And I'm going to rearrange this because this is a little bit tough. And the easiest way to rearrange this is if you have something in the in the denominator, you can do the reciprocal. So you can flip that fraction upside down and then bring it up to the top. 
So that's the same as writing it like this. Rate of my reverse over kz times ky over my rate of my forward. And then I can also rearrange this a little bit differently too and say rate of my reverse divided by rate of my forward multiplied by ky over kz. And now this is the kind of really big important thing. Um, so now what I've did is I've just kind of taken our two general rate laws and I've just rearranged our rate laws to solve for y and z and then I divide them by each other. And I've just done a little bit of rearranging to get it to say that the concentration of z divided by concentration of y equals the ratio of my rates and my rate constants. And what's a big important thing when we're talking about at equilibrium? We said that at equilibrium, my rate of my forward equals my rate of my reverse, right? And if my rate of my forward equals my rate of reverse, this entire term just goes down to one and just uh, will drop out. So at equilibrium, we can ignore this term. So at equilibrium, we can say that the concentration of Z over the concentration of Y equals KY over KZ. And we see that this term over here on the right, KY over KZ, that's just two constants divided by each other. So that's some rate constant divided by a different rate constant. Um, and rather than having two different constants, we're just going to call those a term KC. And KC is just going to be a new term that we're going to introduce. And we're going to talk about this a lot in the next video about what it means. Um, but it's just going to be a term that's a constant made up of a few different constants. And now we have one last question um, that I kind of want to talk about. Then we'll end this video here. And in this next video, we'll talk about then what a lot of this actually means. But you'll see all the stuff I've done this far is I've taken our general rate law. I've rearranged it. And then I dropped eventually down to the ratio of Z and Y are just equal to two constants, which I've just combined it into just one arbitrary constant, which I called KC. So now the question is, is the ratio between Y and Z constant? And at equilibrium, absolutely. During this math, we kind of showed that at equilibrium, our rate of our forward equals our rate of our reverse. And we also said that KY and KZ are constants which we know that by definition, they're just called rate constants. It's literally called rate constants, so they're constant. So therefore the ratio of Z to Y is also going to be a constant. And that ratio is going to purely depend on our rate constants. which will be KY and Z. So this is a really kind of cool thing that we've kind of approached it from a kinetic standpoint, but we'll see that whatever the end result is, because remember these don't, don't have a zero or initial or anything. So these are our final concentrations. So the final concentration of Z and the final concentration of Y and the relationship between them are gonna depend on the rate constants. I think that probably makes intuitive sense, right? Because the, those rate constants are de describing how fast that reaction is going in one direction. We talked about also how that rate constant kind of relates to things like the activation energy um, and how easy it is to go in one direction or the other. Um, so it makes sense that the rate constants will also describe how uh, the final concentrations compare. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and end the video here. And then the next video, we're going to kind of talk about what KC actually is as a, a constant, and then talk a little bit more about these kind of uh, kinetic uh, and equilibrium uh, relations.